So yesterday, a federal judge ruled that President Trump can no longer block people on Twitter. So look, this is something that had been going on for quite some time. President Trump is notorious for blocking people who he disagrees with, right? Oh, you say that Obama is one of the greatest presidents uh, in history? But he's not, but I'm just using that as an example. To block, 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 block. I can't have that. I can't have that. I have such a fragile ego that I'm going to block somebody who's disagrees with me or who starts trolling me. It turns out that, that you actually <laughs> that you actually can't do that. Because it look, uh Twitter, his personal Twitter account, which is his presidential account now, is now part of public record. And as president of the United States, there are laws that say that look, uh this, this, uh, whatever communications that you put out, they're part of the public record. They have to be saved, which means that you can't block certain people. Now, let me get to the details of this. Judge Naomi Rice Buckwald of the U.S. District Court of the Southern District of New York said that President Trump's Twitter account is public, in is a public forum, and blocking people who reply to his tweets with differing opinions constitutes viewpoint discrimination. That, of course, is a big violation of the First Amendment. Now, uh, of course, let me give you some information on who brought this suit. Um, the Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University brought the lawsuit on behalf of seven people who were blocked from the real Donald Trump account because of opinions that they expressed in tweets uh, replying to him. I do not have any examples of those tweets. Uh, Buckwald, who was appointed by former President Clinton, rejected Trump, uh, Trump's argument that the First Amendment does not apply in this case and that the president's first um, uh, personal First Amendment interests supersede those of the plaintiffs. Uh, so, she wrote a 75-page opinion, and she suggested in it that Trump simply could have ignored it. Oh, look, I get trolled all the time. Do I ignore it? Yes. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like to engage. I don't think that I've really blocked anybody. And maybe a couple of mutes, because this always is a little bit fun to, to just think about somebody who's talking essentially to themselves and you don't have to see it. That's fun. Uh, but block, no. I don't think I've blocked anybody. I would be very, very surprised if I have. Uh, now, let me read some of her opinion, right? Now, she says, No First Amendment harm arises when a government challenge conduct is simply to ignore the speaker, as the Supreme Court has affirmed that it is free to do. Stated otherwise, a person's right to speak is not infringed when government simply ignores that person while listening to others or when the government amplifies the voice of one speaker over those others. Buckwald explained that blocking someone on Twitter goes further than just muting them. Muting preserves a block, uh, muted uh, account's ability to reply to a tweet sent by the muting account. Blocking precludes the blocker from using uh, I'm sorry, the blocked user from seeing or replying to the blocking user's tweets entirely. So that's the difference between block and mute. So Donald Trump, you can mute all day. That's fine, <clears throat> right? So go ahead and mute people who have different viewpoints. Well, we can still see your tweets. Therefore, it's not, uh, we can tweet and uh, we can still tweet. We can see them and we can reply to them. Uh, so... That is not a violation of the First Amendment. Um, but blocking obviously is. Now, interestingly enough, Buckwell did not order Trump or Scavino to unblock the individual plaintiffs uh, in the case or prohibit them from blocking others from the account based on their views as the plaintiffs have asked. She said that a de declaratory judgment should be sufficient. And let me go to the statement on that. Because no government official is above the law, and because all government officials are presumed to follow the law, once the judiciary has said what the law is, we must assume that the president and Scavino will remedy the blocking we have held to be unconstitutional. <laughs> now, uh, what are the odds of that one? Probably about 0%. Do you think Donald Trump's going to listen to the courts? <laughs> you are hereby ordered to unblock people that you have blocked. Is he going to do it? Hell no. Maybe a staffer will, if they can actually get access to his Twitter account, um, which I think is just mostly his, and what he uses to tweet at people when he's on executive time in between cheeseburger bites. 
I don't think he's going to do it. <laughs> Honestly. Um, but hey, uh, if he does, good. If he doesn't, then he's in violation of the First Amendment. He's in violation of free speech. I expect the free speech warriors to cheer this day on. Yes, you cannot block. Uh, Donald Trump cannot be uh, cannot block you guys. Then he has to listen to your criticisms. Oh, wait a minute. No, they're not going to be in favor of that. I would be very, very surprised. Uh, now, one more thing here. Uh, this comes from Jamil Jaffer, director of the Knight First Amendment Institute, uh, which, let's see, uh, which the Knight Josh Geltzer, I don't think I have the right quote on here, but okay, we'll skip that because um, that was actually cut off. Uh, let's go to another quote here. Josh Geltzer, who was the executive director of Georgetown Law Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection, uh, he said that the court's ruling is a critical victory in preserving free speech in the digital age. He said the court's thorough decision recognizes that the president's use of real Donald Trump on Twitter makes the type of public forum in which the government may not, under the First Amendment, silence its critics. So, that is awesome. Uh, kind of a funny case. Uh, but also a victory for the First Amendment. How Trump's going to take it? Well, I'm pretty sure he's not going to be happy because now he's actually got to face real criticism. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.